Hello and welcome to In the Making, a series of conversations from North Bennett Street School where we connect with a range of new voices, fields, and perspectives. Before we get into our program, I want to thank the many supporters that make these programs possible, including the Massachusetts Cultural Council. We thank you. Thanks for joining us, everyone. My name is Kristen Odell. I'm an NBSS staff member and host of In the Making. For our first program of the new year, we are back here at our home base taking a much needed winter musical break. We're standing in our own Wingate Gallery here at North Bennett Street School with Betsy Hinkle and Joy Klein Finney, who are members of the Boston Public Quartet. We're so happy to have you. Thank you for being with us. Boston Public Quartet is a local ensemble dedicated to presenting historically excluded composers alongside the traditional canon of classical chamber music in all of Boston's neighborhoods. A personal side note, Betsy and I grew up playing music together, and so it is always a special joy to share our In the Making platform with her and with Joy on this evening um, and the BPQ and the important work they're doing in, um, with chamber music in Boston. And before we start the music, I also want to make mention that um, we have a small, safe audience around us, which I'm really grateful for, that you don't have to play to an empty void this time. So we thank our, our violin making and piano technology students for giving us an audience tonight. Let's get into the music and we'll connect again towards the end of the hour. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for that lovely welcome. We have a wonderful program tonight of three African-American composers who all had historic firsts. They are Harry Thacker Burley, Florence Price, and William Grant Still. Our first composer, Harry Thacker Burley, was born in 1866. He was the first composer, African-American composer, to bring African-American spirituals into the concert art form, art song form that we know today. He was born in 1866 in Erie, Pennsylvania, and he was surrounded by spirituals that his mother sang to him as a young child. These spirituals were handed down from her father, Burley's grandfather, and he was formerly a slave. Burley loved music, and at the age of 26, he got a scholarship to the National Conservatory in New York. And this is important because it is here that he meets Antonin Dvorak, the famous Czech composer, who came to the United States and was the head of the National Conservatory. Burley became Dvorak's assistant and Dvorak encouraged Burley to sing for hours um, that he listened to these spirituals and encouraged him to write them out. And in turn, Dvorak used these spirituals in some of his greatest works that were written between 1892 and 1895. Burley went on to write hundreds of concert songs uh, and arrangements of spirituals, and he also wrote a number of pieces for instrumental pieces as well. And this is one, this was written in 1916, and it's called Southland Sketches, and it's a set of four miniatures for violin and piano. We hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
so much, everyone. Everyone, <laughs> let me just get my notes up. <sighs> so our next um, composer is Florence Beatrice Price. And she deserves to be what I like to call a household name composer. Her work is full of richness and breadth and beloved by all who are lucky enough to hear it. In fact, the last time, well, sorry, that's a story for another time. Florence Price was born in 1887 in Little Rock, Arkansas, and moved to Chicago in 1927 as part of the Great Migration a result of racist violence and discrimination in the South. As a pianist, organist, and music educator, she attended the New England Conservatory right here in Boston and graduated in 1906 with honors with both an artist diploma in organ and a teaching certificate. Um, and while enrolled, she actually described herself as Mexican to try and avoid racial discrimination here in Boston. The two, uh, we are playing three works by uh, Miss Price, and um, two are entitled Fantasy, and they are amazing works um, in which Joy and I are really excited to have, ex have um, explored together. They're very virtuosic and romantic for both instruments, um, as well as they also include Price's signature inclusion of the rhythmic and melodic elements of African American spirituals. Um, Fantasy number no. one was composed in 1933, and that was the same year that Price's symphony, her first symphony, was premiered by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, making her the first African American woman to have a work performed by a major symphony orchestra. Um, the Fantasy number no. two in F sharp minor was composed in 1940. And that was the same year that uh, Price was inducted into the American Society of Composers, Authors, and Publishers, also known as ASCAP. And we will also, in between the two fantasies, we will perform her adoration, which is um, a, a different type of work. It's um, much more spiritual. It was originally composed for um, as a work for organ, it was published in 1951, which was just two years before her death. We hope you enjoy these works as much as we enjoy playing them, and that you'll continue to explore the over 300 works by Florence Beatrice Price. Thank you. 
Thank you. Our last composer is William Grant Still, and he's often called the Dean of African American Music. He wrote in almost every genre, um, over 200 works. Um, he was born in 1895, uh, spent most of his younger life actually in Little Rock, Arkansas. He started playing the violin when he was 15, and he went on to teach himself how to play a number of instruments. Um, he excelled in also the oboe and the cello. Um, he spent a few years at Oberlin. Um, he also studied briefly uh, at the New England Conservatory of Music. And then he went on to be an arranger. Um, and so he really was multifaceted. Um, he also spent time not only in Harlem uh, during the Renaissance, the Harlem Renaissance, but he also then went to Los Angeles where he did a lot of work um, in, uh, in uh, theater music and uh, movie music. And that's really where he made uh, a lot of money. And, uh, but he composed many, many works. Uh, he was the first African-American composer to have a major symphony played by a major orchestra. He was also the first African-American to conduct a major orchestra, which was the LA Philharmonic. Um, his first symphony was performed, I believe, in 1930. Um, this was just a few years before Florence Price had her symphony premiered. Um, this piece is the suite for violin and piano, which was written in 1943. It's in three movements, and it was inspired by three sculptures by African American African American artists um, that did three sculptures during the 30s. Um, the first one is by um, Richmond Barte, and it's called African Dancer, and it's a beautiful sculpture, an African dancer. I encourage you to go look at it online. Um, it it connotates a lot of energy and um, you'll hear that within the first movement. The second is by, um, it's called Mother and Child. And um, that one is by uh, um, Barte. <laughs> I guess. And um, this actually, uh, um, this one was actually made into an orchestral uh, movement later. Uh, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, piece, which I think that you will recognize. The third uh, is by a sculpture by um, Augustus Savage called Gamut. And it is of a boy who's an orphaned boy uh, who has a hat on. And uh, again, I encourage you to look this up online. So we have African Dancer, the first movement, Mother and Child, the second movement, and Gavin the third. We hope you enjoy. Thank you. 
want to see if you have any um, questions from our audience, but um, I think that's a great end cap and we cannot tell you and uh, thank you enough for being here so much. Thank you for having us. You've brought yeah. life into this gallery that hasn't seen life in so long. And thank you to our students who are tucked away in all the pockets here. It's yeah. it, it's really cool to have an audience. <laughs> it's great to Anyway, thank you all, and thank you for joining us this evening, and um, to Joy Klein Finney and Betsy Hinkle of um, Boston Public Quartet, and uh, to our community, and we will see you next week. There's another in the making next week, so we'll see you then. Thanks for joining us.